sisters, the peace of the Lord. We're going to open up our Bibles in Exodus chapter 12. Exodus 12, chapter 9. This uh, message is a continuation from the message on Sunday. We're not going to repeat the, the preaching, but we're going to work with the women. Um, Exodus 12. Exodus 12, 9. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses. Do not eat raw, nor boil at all with water, but roast it in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand so you shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover this message is a prophecy to many it is just a story but for us this message is a prophecy regarding the church, regarding what the Lord was going to do with the church, with our lives. So if we look to everything that happened with Israel in Egypt, we're going to see really that it was prophetic. the way the people were cared for, the way they were slaved, the way that Pharaoh imposed hard labor. They worked. They never had rest. And because it is because they were building these pyramids, the Pharaoh pyramids, a few pyramids would take 40 years to be finished. It would take forever. It was kind of work that, with the technology of the time. Well, so the pharaohs, they did that. What was the, the reason? What is the point for the, for, for the pyramids? What was the purpose of the pyramids for the pharaohs? They were buried inside there. Did you know that? They were buried there. They were placed there because so then Pharaoh used people of the Lord to work towards his own death. So that's what wor the world does to men today. T the world and its political system, it leads men to be concerned not with God, but it brings men to have a life, to live a life away from God. So, in other words, with eternal death. So, the way in which man gets involved with the things of this life, it is exactly the an illustration of the people in Egypt, the work in the world building towards death. A man today, when man is away from God, doesn't know, without knowing, man is counting his own days towards death, away from eternity, or away from God, because there are two paths before man, for man's soul. There is no, like, being in the middle of the ground, or either he goes to hell, which is an eternal life away from God, or he goes to heaven, which is a, an eternal life in the presence of God. There is no middle ground, there is no um, compromise. There was one or the other. And when man is on earth, man is counting his days towards death. But when man is in the presence of God, man counts his days towards an eternal life. Even 
if he dies on this life, but he will resurrect in Jesus. So the people worked in this way. They worked without rest, building, uh, manufacturing bricks in order to please Pharaoh. But now the Lord hears the plea of the people. He answered the prayer of the people and raises, rises up Moses to lead the Jewish people out of Egypt. He prepares Moses for 40 years and four more years. 40 more years. And he prepares Moses to be a messenger, to be the element that was going to show, that was going to lead the people of God towards Cana, which was the promised land. Cana was a, the land that was the Lord gave to Abraham. Abraham went to Cana, but then the people in jo Joseph, because of Joseph, the people went to Egypt. You know why? Do you remember why the Jewish people went to Egypt? How did the Jewish people go to Egypt? It was because of Joseph. He was sold to, to slavery. Abraham, Isaac, Abraham, his son was Isaac, right? And then Isaac had two sons, twin, twin children, Esau and Jacob. And Jacob was the second son. The name Jacob was was turned was changed to Israel. Remember when he was he had a vision of a stairs where the angels were going to heaven up and down, and he put his head on a on a rock, and there he had a dream, and he fought with the angel, and his name was exchanged from Jacob to Israel. Right. So then Jacob who is Israel, he had children, right? He had many children. So then he had he got married with one, and then it was not that one, then he got married with another one. So Joseph was the first, the first son of the second marriage, which was the marriage with the woman that he really loved. He got married with one, he was deceived by his uncle. So now I'm just, cutting corners here so we can get into the message. So then Joseph was born. And then and Joseph was sold, do you remember? Was sold as a slave because the envy of his brothers, he was uh, thought to be dead. But then he was sold. He ended up there in Egypt, right? He ended up, ended up working for Pharaoh. He was in the prison. And he uh, interpreted a few dreams, and then there was a famine. There was a famine. And Pharaoh had a dream. Do you remember the dream of the, the s s skinny cows and the fat cows? Joseph interpreted this dream, and he, inter and, he I, and he discerned the dream, and he instructed Pharaoh on how to proceed. So there was a great famine in that region. Nobody could plant or sow because it was a drought, it was not raining, whatever they had was go, uh, go running out. But in the silos of Pharaoh, there, were, there, were, there was a lot of grain because he was prepared. Why? Because Joseph became a governor. So the food that people needed for the region was on his hands. So then his father I didn't even know that Joseph was alive, who was a governor. So that there was a famine. He sent his bread to go to Egypt to buy food. And that's when his brothers recognized Joseph and were forgiven. And then this period after that, Pharaoh invited Joseph's family to go to Egypt. So he brought his whole family, 65, six, a little more than 60 people from this small, small number was created the great nation of Israel. 400 years passed and then how Israel had become a great nation inside of uh, a nation of Egypt. Right? So then the promised land belonged to Israel. was the, the land that 
the Lord had given to Abram, so they didn't took over land from anyone. Oh, it was God's project. So then, 400 years later, the Lord heard a prayer of the people and decided to deliver the people. So then, He got Moses to do this. So the text that we just read speaks of the last night of the Jewish people in Egypt. The second to last plague was the plague of the darkness, where was a, a darkness so dense that was a fell upon Egypt so that no one could see it. But inside of the houses of the Hebrew people, there was light. It was a miracle. But now we read about the preparation for the last plague. Last plague. The plagues they came upon upon the entire Egypt including the people of the Lord. But the Lord gave the deliverance. So the shock that God gave to Moses was tell the people to set aside the lamb. They would sacrifice the lamb. They put the, the blood of the lamb on the war posts. And now Moses, when the people get home, you instruct the people on how they should proceed. They should do not eat it in a raw with their heart. The belt on your waist, your sandals on your foot, and your staff in your hand. So the Lord had told them to eat the lamb completely. They had to eat the head of the lamb, the feet of the lamb, the entrails of the lamb. So they had to eat everything. Nothing should be left. And the lamb could not be cooked on water, or boiling water. It had to be cooked on fire. So God gave details about that night, God gave Moses, Moses all the instruction. So that now, now I ask the sisters, who didn't fulfill this prayer, what hap this instruction? What happened to them? They lost their, their son. They didn't receive their blessing. Here comes the matter of obedience. It's a matter of faith. It comes a matter of you wanting the blessing of God and fighting for your blessing, following the voice of, listening to the voice of God. So the Lord gave the following instruction. People have to eat the lamb completely. Not only the, the good parts, not, not the thigh, not the good parts, not the, the neck, the head, the worst parts, everything. So then they need to do this with the belt, in haste, the shoot on their feet. So then we're going to do, that's where we're going to start, start with the sisters. What do the sister think that it means? What does it mean to have with a belt on your waist? What is the prophetic understanding of this? Uh, waist on your belt, uh, belt on your waist. Uh, the people that do exercise, they put, they carry weight. They put a belt. What is this belt for? To, to, get, so you can have a good support. So you can protect your, your, your backbone. So when you wear a belt, you, you have support for your back. So it's not going to cause any damage to your health. It's not going to cause any serious consequence, bring any serious consequence to your backbone. And this is what it is. This is the position the servant of the Lord has to have at this time. That's why this message has everything to do with the church. We live in this last, this last moment. The ninth, the ninth plague has already fallen upon the people, which is what we see out there. The, the darkness that is out there, the evil that is upon man, the world, we see all of it. The, the previous plagues, we are gonna, we're not going to speak about them, but they already happened to the world. The situations that we can show to the sister in the future, but we are going to um, concentrate on the ninth plague. Dance plagues, 
dense darkness of the world, which is the evil that uh, operates in the world. We've never seen anything as bad as what we've seen it today. In the past, when we heard about some of the scenes, you could count on your fingers. On my time, we heard situation about you can't count on your fingers. Today, you have a hard time finding a person is completely a man. Why? Because the world is upside down. It is difficult. The enemy of our souls has taken over the whole world. Those are the darkness there are in the world. We live in this moment. That's why the church needs to be. The position of the church has to be according to what the Lord has instructed here. We cannot allow situations to enter into our house, and enter into our home and our spiritual life. We cannot uh, allow this. The position of the church has to be a defined position. Either you are with the Lord or you are not with the Lord. No one can be uh, undecided. And you can only understand this when you know the Word. You can only accept what God has for you if you understand what God has for you. The position of the church has to be a position of definition. I know G I am Jesus. No matter what happens, the offering the world may come, but it, you want the Lord. You want this for your life. So, belt on your waist. That's what it is. Nothing will deceive me. Nothing will prevent will let me lose the blessing from God. What is the prophetic meaning of shoes on your feet? Right. So we can walk. Shoes on your feet. So when you are at home, when you are at home, what do you do? What is the first thing you do? You take your shoes off, you rest. Same way here. Your belt on your waist. The guy worked all day. When he got home, first thing that he wanted was to take this belt, take this uh, clothing, and take your shoes off. You want to rest. You want to take a little me time. So this moment, specifically speaking, we cannot rest. You cannot be accommodated. You cannot take the shape with what the world is trying to uh, insert into the church. Shoes on your feet because we are firm in, into a new path. We are ready to walk in Jesus at any moment. There cannot be that moment in which you, oh, I cannot go today, it's difficult, I think I'm going to rest a little bit. You are unprepared. You are too comfortable. The, in, that's what it is. Shoes on your feet, ready to run. So in the Air Force or in the Army, the soldiers are on Sentinel. They, they sleep wearing, or they're all dressed up with the shoes. They, they are completely dressed up they're with their uniform because at any moment the enemy can the enemy can come. There are all other soldiers they are resting, but they the one that they are sentinels. They, they're ready. How about now? Um, the staff on your hand is. What does he mean? It is the direction of the Holy Spirit. You need to always consult the Lord. You always have to pray to the Lord. You need to always seek the direction of the Lord for your life, for your home, for your marriage, for your professional life. That's what it is to have a staff on your hand. They had to eat in that way. This is the instruction of the Lord. You have to eat, sitting at the, the table in that way, shoes on, the staff on your hand, spiritually speaking, having staff on your hand is that's what it means. The servant of the Lord needs to be seeking the Lord every time all the time. Bless it for his life. You need to eat in haste. What does it mean prophetically? To eat in haste. Quickly. With haste, yeah, quickly. So what does it mean for us spiritually speaking today? It is the time that we are living. 
at the time called soon. The time called soon, time called soon, Jesus is coming. That's what it is. The church lives today, lives this moment, the moment of the time called soon. Why? Because the Bible says that the last days, the days were going to be shortened. Have you heard about that? Can you imagine? They as fast as, as the days that we are living in every aspect. Wake up in the morning, what you least expect is time for you to go to bed again. Sometimes you don't even have time to wake up, to sleep. And that's true, it is in every aspect, not only physically, but uh, shortened days in the last days. What does that mean? Have you seen what the internet does today? Uh, a bomb explodes on all on the other side of the world, and you watch here. Sometimes I have life. This is a shortened day. A letter that you sent sometimes took a month to arrive. Sometimes a week, two weeks. Now you write on your cell phone, and it arrives there immediately. If you if you when you start typing, sometimes you by by accident you. You press the wrong button and the message is already there. The, our times are, uh, are in haste. The, the days are sh short. And the church has to be in this speed, in this rhythm. rhythm. Meetings and early dawns and supper of the Lord, mass services. and Because if we allow the enemy, we'll the world will defeat us. If we don't, we are not vigilant. The enemy is going to destroy the plan of God in our lives. That's why we're fighting for our blessings, so we don't lose, waste. If we don't miss on this, the the beat that the Holy Spirit wants for us. In the beginning of the church, the Holy Spirit wanted to save us. So that's why we need to be uh, in walking the same rhythm as the Holy Spirit. That's why the prophets sh has shown so many years before Jesus. Now it's being fulfilled in our days. So the people needed to be in this rhythm, walking in this way, ready, prepared, willing. So now we're going to see what it is the revelation of the Lord shows to us, what it is to eating the head, eating the feet, eating the entrails. What do you think? What is the revelation? What is discernment about this uh, instruction where the Lord asked the people to eat everything? What do you think? It is obedience. Obedience means sanctification. When you sanctify yourself, that's when you, you are able to do everything the Lord demands of us. So I think that the first step is to seek sanctification because we don't need to serve the Lord in our way. We need to serve the Lord according to the way He wants us to serve Him. So many times, we human beings, anybody else, sometimes we even try to bring uh, things of the world inside of the church and the last time that's what we have been seeing people don't want anymore to have this identity we have to have the identity of servants because we need to live in the holy presence of the Lord and the holy presence of the Lord is not only inside of time it's every, inside of the temple it's everywhere because we are in the house of the Lord most importantly Serving the Lord inside here is very easy. Because you have to take your shoes off because it's a holy place. The Bible says that. But in the last days, we are trying to live the world inside of the church many times. But I believe that we need to eat of the entrails, like the Word says. But in order for us to participate on everything, we need to want. Because it's not easy. It's very easy for you to come here, sit down, listen to our messages, sing a couple of songs and go back home. When you do participate, the commitment, which were the things, holy things of the Lord, this in our days is very difficult. 
you're eating here, the, eating the head, the, the entrance is you accepting the gospel. It's accepting what God has for your life completely. So you choose, oh, I, I want to go to the surf this Sunday. I want to go because there is uh, support the Lord. I'm not going to go to early dawn. I'm going to go to the meeting of the group because in the house of that sister, I'm not going to pray today because I read the Bible. There is no uh, exchange. The life of sanctification is constant. Salvation, Jesus, is an action. But the maintenance of salvation is through sanctification, which is constant. This is every day. That is being in the presence of the Lord is a blessing, but you don't have the energy to wake up early dawn to come here. A person that is in this situation gives too much worth to to the trial, forgetting that the victory is already being given, being given by, God, by God. There are people that want just want to benefit of salvation. When they are in trial, they they fast, they put everybody to pray to the group who visit them. They do early done for his life, but then when he receives the blessing, it it just vanishes. There are people that live like that. They just want to eat the good meat. They only have the gospel for their own benefit. There are people like this. And a person that used to go to the church, he gave offering only when he was in trial. When he was in difficult financial difficulty, he would give an offering. Yeah. I'm going to give an offer. So, because if I give 20, God is going to give a thousand. Because God is rich, I'm going to give 20. So God is going to give me ta a thousand. People have this kind of mindset. They only deal with the things of the Lord for their own benefits. But the Bible says that we need to eat everything. Cooked on fire. What does that mean? It's revelation. Men will only understand the Bible when the Bible is burnt on fire. It's cooked on fire when the, the Word is pure, it's when the Word is revealed, because the fire removes impurity, removes the, the all grease, what it is not worth it. Well, the meat, the good meat, it remains. But the fire, it, it burns, it removes everything that is not good. So the people, let's bring the message to, to a finish. When the people left Egypt, when the people left Egypt, what did they eat? The lamb? They benefited from the death of the lamb. The lamb was killed, so then they ate of what the lamb left for them. The Bible says that Jesus is the eternal lamb of God. He is the eternal lamb that takes the sin away from the world. So the people in Egypt, they ate a lamb that was killed. But the church, the faithful church, us, us church, we benefit from the living lamb. The lamb that was resurrected because the good for us is that Jesus was resurrected. The lamb that he ate there had no other purpose. It was over. That's why that is history. But the, G the revealed Jesus, but the, the prophetic Jesus, on the history is left behind. And that's when the revealed Jesus enters and the church of the Lord is benefited in the glorified Jesus. That's why in Revelation, let us open in Revelation 1. Revelation 1. See how the church take possession and see the glorified Jesus. The world that doesn't have commitment to God. But the, the faithful church sees Jesus Revelation 1, verse 14. We said they, here that uh, we had to eat the lamb. How did John Jesus oh, witness? And his uh, head was like uh, 
His hair is like snow. And the Jesus we serve, Jesus has control over our lives, is the Jesus whose head was white, like a white, white wool, because this is a holy Jesus. This is a sanctified Jesus. So the church today has to take possession of the, the head of the Lamb, which is the government of the church. Isn't Jesus the government of the church? Isn't he the head of the church and we are the body? So the, the church of the Lord, the church will see Jesus, but they glorify Jesus, the holy Jesus, the Jesus who was victorious. The white head here is the Jesus who is mature, the Jesus that knows all things, speaks of wisdom, right? His head and hair were white like wool. And also speaks of uh, holiness of Jesus, like, and his eyes like a flame of fire. And it says also, for verse 15, his feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. The feet of Jesus that John saw, they were uh, feet like a, a fine brass. So the walking servants and the church is walk on fire with continuous trials or the Holy Spirit is always trying us constantly but the Holy Spirit is allowing us to go through situations so we are tested right because in the same way that the fine breath there it shines it also went through fire like if it was refined on a furnace every day isn't it a trial. When you f uh, finish that day, you think, "Oh, how am I? How was I able to endure?" That's how it is. But the Lord gives us victory. gives us give us the means to withstand everything, because we are never alone. Because the Lord Jesus, we walk on a path that leads us to eternity. Right? So let's go. So. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his contents was like the sun shining in its strength. We spoke of, about the head, and we speak of the feet, and how about his entrails, and from his and from his right hand seven stars, and through his mouth a sword. What comes out of the mouth? What is inside? Isn't it true? If it came out, it was because inside there. If it came out of the mouth, it was because inside. The entrance speaks of the sword. So the sword of the Lord is what is inside of God. The word is the sword is the word of God that leads man to an understanding, to hear the the word that leads man to believe in Jesus. So that's why those points are very important for us, because the head, the, the feet, and the entrails. Today we have the Holy Spirit in the, uh, and for us, which is the head of the church. We have the feet, which is our walk in the presence of the Lord, and the entrails, with, which is the, the word of the Lord. It has to Transformation can only happen from inside out. Uh, the complete transformation can only happen when the Holy Spirit works from inside out. Oh, I'm going to change because the Lord, the pastor is looking at me. No, that's not how it's going to happen. You change the way of life. You change the way you speak. You change the way you act because the Holy Spirit testifies in you and made you to understand that you needed to change. It's not because the pastor complained. It was because the husband or wife complained. No. It was because the Holy Spirit worked inside of you, in your mind. It made you to understand this project, right? So I think we've already spoken above everything, right? So the moment in which we're living, the church needs, we need to be ready to embrace the work of the Holy Spirit, to embrace the kingdom of God to embrace this project because there's no time. There's no other opportunity. 
if we make a mistake right now, we're going to be left behind. There's no time. There's no time to waste. Why? Because at any moment, the angel was going to pass the last plague, the death of the firstborn, and whatever, there was no... This teaching or the instruction was not being fulfilled. They were going to see the death inside of their own homes. Amen? So here's this message for the sisters so that you may be giving worth to this moment in the presence of the Lord, fighting for this moment, praying to the Lord, paying the price for your home, for your marriage, for your life, for the life of your children, for your professional life, because there's nothing more important in this life than for us to follow the instruction of the Lord. Amen. Let us stand up. Let us have a word of glorification to the Lord and bring this, this service to an end. Lord, we glorify your name. We praise the Lord for this moment in your presence which you, Lord, spoke deeply to our hearts. Lord, we praise you for the knowledge every day that we have. Every time we enter into a house, we can learn a little bit more of you. We praise the Lord for this door <coughs> that you opened for our lives so that we can be here gathered in your name. Praise you for everything that you have done in our midst and what you have done to our church and everything you have done on favor of those that have sought your direction, Lord. We praise the Lord for our lives stand in your presence for the for your care towards our lives because our family members that this month we believe you are to operate a great blessing in the homes of, of the uh, the family members of each one here or even those whom for some reason may not have been able to be here remain with uh, your hands laid upon us so that we may never leave your presence and that we may continue looking towards heavens where our help comes from. We praise the Lord and also we ask you that you may continue laying your hand upon the life of Renata because she's going to go through a surgery uh, on the 18th so that the angels of the Lord may be sent from eternity to be present uh, uh, all, all the time in her surgery so that she may see the operation of the Lord in her life. Give the means to each doctor that may put their hands on your daughter. So operate with great grace, Lord, so that your daughter may come back to your house, praise your holy name, and we as church may also rejoice with her. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. We Give the life of your daughter to your care in the name of Jesus. Lord, receive this, this moment and take us home in peace. May you continue operating in each home here represented, each family, Lord. Even those that were not able to be here tonight, we ask that you may uh, reach them, visit them, and uh, cause them to uh, the desire to be here so we may all follow your instruction Lord receive our praise is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolation of and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore Amen Amen Sister peace to the Lord Thank you.